Okay, so uh, while waiting for the others, uh, just a reminder. Uh, so there's an announcement. Uh, there's an announcement uh, from Dr. Gunas. Okay, if you check the Weber announcement. Uh, okay, so she mentioned that uh, on 4th of November. Okay, next two weeks uh, is uh, week three. Okay, so that would be a uh, tutorial two. OK, tutorial two. Uh, so the, uh, on, on that day, uh, Thursday is a uh, public holiday, okay, Dipawali, right? So she planned to have uh, the class on the public holiday, OK, because uh, it's really hard for us to find a date for the replacement, OK? If we, if we didn't uh, conduct uh, the class, OK, uh, on the scheduled uh, date, right? Okay, so uh, so I hope you all can uh, um, fill up the agree form, uh, the, the the Google form, okay, and agree to that. Okay, so it means that uh, each group will uh, will be carried uh, according to your timetable. Okay, but uh, it will be a holiday. Okay, a public holiday. Okay, and then uh, on Thursday it will be included the. Tutorial one, okay. Tutorial group one, right? Tutorial group one is the physical class, okay. So uh, Dr. Gunas uh, would like to have that uh, as online as well, okay. So I hope you all uh, can agree, okay. Agree with that arrangement. All right. So just in case you all didn't see the the link, uh, okay, I will paste it here for you all. Okay, so physical tutorial class will be on OTL on the thing. Uh, yes, uh, VJ. Okay, according to Dr. Gunas. Lah. Okay. But for your tutorial one, uh, tutorial one, group one, uh, physical class, uh, please come to the campus. Okay. So, so far only this uh, tutorial two uh, for group one uh, will be conduct. Uh, as uh, online. Oh. 
Okay. So any questions uh, regarding the tutorial? So there'll be no changes on the data for the tutorial uh, two in week three. Okay, so tutorial one remain unchanged. Yes. Yes, Han. So make sure you... Um, okay, tutorial one. Yeah, remain unchanged. Right. So tutorial one will be next week. Okay, in week two. Okay, and then uh, another reminder is that um, uh, regarding the assignment. Okay, so you may start looking for your group members. Uh, okay, after I uh, communicate with uh, Dr. Lee. Okay, so um, so you all may have uh, uh, to form a group uh, with uh, five members. Okay, and uh, uh, please uh, please find your group members according to the uh, programs. Okay, means that uh, there will be two um, two two um, Excel. Okay, two Excel form. Okay, uh, uh, it's a Google for uh, Google Excel uh, Excel sheet. Okay, so uh, according to the program. Okay, so one for CI. Okay, civil engineering, and the other one is for uh, CL student. Okay, so you may uh, fill up the grouping. Okay, accordingly. Okay, according to your program. Okay, I think uh, the 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 Excel sheet will be uh, post to the web by this week. Okay, so you can uh, check the web from time to time. Okay. And then next week, uh, next uh, next Wednesday, okay, uh, the topic will be released. Okay, I will post it uh, on Weber. Right, the assignment sheet, the assignment uh, question. Uh. Okay, is that clear for the assignment part? Okay. All right, we have 130. All right, I think we can uh, start. Huh? Okay, can you all see the screen? It should be the full screen, right? All right. Okay, so this uh, topic two, um, water chemistry, sources and use trends. So this is topic two. It's quite long, uh, this topic. Um, okay, so you can see the uh, the topic outline. Okay, we'll start uh, with the natural uh, sources of water. So here we'll discuss about uh, the hydrological cycle. Okay, and then we go for the water budget, uh, then the reservoir to estimate uh, the storage volume. Okay, and 
The second part uh, or second session will be the alternative sources of water supply. So how we get uh, the water supply. Okay, so normally what, where, how we get it. Okay, um, so this I have uh, briefly discussed it uh, during the introduction. Okay, uh, uh, previously, right? And then the third uh, section will be the water use trend and forecasting. So here we will involve some of the uh, calculations. Okay, so we have the water use uh, as in global, okay, personal uh, and sectors, okay, by sectors. Okay, and the last one will be the population uh, forecasting, okay, to estimate because the water use is uh, depends on the populations, okay, so that, that is the main factors. So here we will learn about the population forecasting for the water use trend. Okay, so this is the hydrological uh, cycle or also known as water cycle, okay, but it's uh, commonly known as uh, hydrological cycle. Okay, so uh, this is also not a new thing to you. Okay, so we, I think you have uh, you have seen it uh, many times. Right. Okay, so this uh, is a cycle. Okay, so you can see the uh, precipitations okay, from the rain or snow okay and then you can also see the runoff okay, the south uh, the surface runoff uh, from after melting from the uh, snow and also the rain runoff okay and if there is a lake okay or a river there will be uh, evaporations okay and um, uh, infiltrations okay the groundwater flow Okay, discharge back to the uh, lake, okay, and or to the ocean, okay, and also uh, some uh, transpirations happens, okay. So this uh, this uh, diagram just to uh, show you uh, how is the water moves around, okay, in a cycle, okay. So this is very important. Uh, okay, maybe the next slide is uh, clearer, okay. Okay, this is uh, important because uh, when you know how the water moves, okay, then you can uh, apply it in the in the formula uh, in the next slide, uh, which is uh, to estimate the uh, water budget. Okay, so here are some of the terms uh, that is uh, that you can see. Okay, um, so evaporations, evaporations. Okay, so. Uh, number two is uh, interception, uh, okay, interceptions here, okay. So um, the meaning uh, of interception is that uh, when the water uh, uh, drops, okay, and stay on the plants, okay, it haven't reached the ground, okay, and it start evaporates, okay. That is interception. Okay, and then uh, transpiration is like the plants um, breathing. Okay, so it it uh, comes out as a like a water vapor. Uh, evaporations, evaporations. Okay, surface runoff. Okay, the surface runoff is uh, is uh, is is kind of tricky. Uh, okay, so if this is the 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 the, the study uh, area. Okay. The place that you want to study okay the area okay so when the wa water runoff okay the surface runoff uh, move towards the stream here okay so it will be like a intake okay uh, to the stream so it means that the water will increase the water level will increase for the runoff that going into the stream okay and uh, for the stream that um, uh, it moves out from the area that that you uh, see, so that is uh, a loss. Okay, so the surface runoff can be a gain or loss. Okay, depends on the situation. Okay, so I'll explain it further in the ex uh, example later on. Okay, then the seventh is the infiltration. Okay, infiltrations. Uh, so the water on the surface will seep into the uh, the ground. Okay, so that is infiltrations, and then the groundwater. Okay, and the last one is the deep 
collisions. Okay, so it moves into the uh, rocks. Okay. So that is further uh, infiltrations. Okay, so we call it a deep recollection. Okay, so here is some of the description of each uh, process, okay, or the stages. Okay, you may uh, refer to it. Um, okay. Okay, I think I will not uh, explain further on this part. Okay, you may uh, have a look. Okay. Okay, it should be easy to uh, understand okay, for this uh, station of every stages in the water cycle. Okay, so the water budget. Okay, so here um, we use it to forecast of the water that require in order to uh, uh, support the future uh, demands. Okay, so actually the water budget, okay, uh, we, uh, is a is a is a hydrological tools okay that we use it to quantify the um, the flow of the water okay uh, in and out from the system okay so that's why you can see the uh, the formula okay it's actually uh, quite simple okay the changes of the storage okay the changes in storage okay is equal to inflow uh, minus outflows okay so the inflow is um, is is all the sources of the water, whether it is natural or human made, okay, that entering the region, the region that the the area that you are going to study, okay. So that is uh, inflow. Okay, outflow means that all movement of water out of the region, okay. So uh, easy to understand, right? The water move out from the region, so that is outflow. So the outflow includes uh, evaporations, evapotranspirations, groundwater flow, okay, uh, and the surface water flow. Okay, so this all uh, consider as outflow. Okay, the water that uh, disappear. Okay, uh, from the region that you are studying. Okay, so what are the factors that will affect the uh, water requirement? Okay. So populations, uh, industrial development, uh, agricultural practices, okay, water policy, um, water policy, technology, and water management practices. Okay, so this we will um, uh, discuss further in the next section. Uh, uh, in the the factors that affect the water use. Okay. Um, right. Okay, the quantities of water that going through various individual paths of the hydrological cycle can be described by the continuity principle. Okay, so this is the water budget equation, or sometimes it's known as a hydrologic equation. Okay, a water budget is an attempt to follow the water or account for the movement and transformation of water in a watershed or region okay so uh, so the proper term is uh, should be watershed right the watershed that we are going to study the area okay input minus output is the changes in storage okay that's the general equation okay so here uh, is one example okay so we can see the Changes of storage is due to uh, precipitation. Okay, Pre precipitation is the input. Okay, because the uh, rainfall uh, falls to the watershed. Okay, so there will be increase of the uh, water. Okay, and then surface runoff is the uh, outflow. Okay, evaporations also uh, outflow, and then the transpirations. Okay, so these three are the uh, uh, causes of the water loss. Okay, so this will be the uh, changes in storage after uh, you calculating it. All right, so this is only an example. Okay, so others input uh, could be 
uh, groundwater inflow. Okay, so as, as I mentioned earlier, okay, or the previous slide, you can see that the groundwater flow is considered as the uh, output. Okay, but sometimes it can be input. Okay, so depends on the uh, condition. Okay, so here it, it mentioned that it is groundwater inflow. So that means the groundwater flows into the watershed. Okay, that is, that will become input. Same as the surface runoff. Okay. And the output here, uh, you can see uh, surface runoff, evaporation, okay, groundwater outflow. Okay, so both are groundwater, but one is inflow and one is, the other one is outflow. Okay, so depends. Okay, you have to read the question uh, carefully. Okay, so surface water is uh, non-uniformly uh, distributed over the Earth's surface. Mm. OK, because this part we are talking about the uh, surface water. OK, so um, so th all, all those uh, uh, precipitations, uh, surface runoff, they are all under sur uh, surface water. Right, so the volume of the freshwater sources depends on the geographic and landscape, temporal variations and the impact of human activities. OK, the historical records. OK. Runoff. Mm. Okay, so here is only some uh, brief uh, description of uh, uh, what is the surface runoff and also uh, surface water and also what is the uh, runoff. Okay. So the next one is the uh, example. Okay. So we can look at the questions. Uh, an outflow of six point five meter cube per second is to be developed from a 500 kilometer square watershed. Okay, at the flow line, okay, the area of reservoir is estimated to cover 25 times 10 power of 6 meter square. Okay, and uh, here are some of the uh, historical data. Okay, the annual ra ra rainfall is 115 uh, centimeter. Okay, annual runoff is 40 cm and the annual evaporation is 150 cm okay find the gain and loss in storage okay so actually the question is asking about uh, find whether it is a gain or loss in the storage okay and then determine the uh, shouldn't mention the net loss lah, okay then you know it will be it will be a loss in this uh, storage okay determine the changes in the storage lah, okay should be all right, so how how we are uh, going to solve this? Okay, so first of all, you have to identify um, what is input and what is output. Can anyone uh, tell me uh, what is the outflow? What is what is the input? What is the output? In this question, Okay, you can see the rainfall, okay, runoff, uh, evaporation, right, these three, and one more is the outflow. Okay, uh, okay, thanks, uh, Yitinga. Uh. Input is the rainfall, okay. Runoff is outflow. Okay. Evaporations. This outflow is different from the runoff. Huh? Okay, two different things. Okay, the outflow is flow to the reservoir. Okay, 
so you have to you have to read carefully uh, um yi hao mm, okay i can see other answers here okay output evaporations runoff outflow input is rainfall okay okay um okay zi hao and abraham okay good okay uh so yi hao uh, okay you have to look read the question carefully uh, you can see the outflow here this outflow is actually uh, is a group of the water that flowing out, okay, outflow, right? So it's flowing out from the watershed. So it doesn't matter uh, how, uh, how, how is the process, okay, or what is the process, okay? So it, it mentioned that it is outflow, okay, outflow from watershed. Okay, watershed is the, is the region uh, that you study. Okay, so for example, this is the uh, okay. Mm. Okay, for example, this is the uh, watershed. Okay. And at the edge, at, okay, let's say this uh, at one edge, lah, okay? So this is reservoir. Okay. So the outflow, um, okay, so the water flows out, okay, flows out. So this is outflow. Okay. So you have rainfall, runoff. Okay, runoff to the um, okay. Okay, rainfall and then runoff and evaporations. Okay, for the run, uh, rainfall, uh, runoff and the evaporation, it all happens uh, in the uh, this reservoir. Okay. Okay, so if you look at the uh, units, huh? okay, it gives you in the uh, for the rainfall is centimeter. Okay, so you are look, looking for the changes in storage. So that means uh, the unit that you, you are going to find is in. Um, so let's say we use a meter, right? Okay, it's given in the question. Okay, it's mentioned in the question. So you are going to use the volume in meter cube. Okay, so you get all this uh, convert to the uh, meter cube. Okay, so let's say we're going to find the input. Okay, input. Okay, so input is the rainfall. Okay. So one one five cm. So one 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 five. So it's equal to uh, okay the rainfall one point one five meter. Okay, times. Okay, because this happens here in the uh, reservoir. Okay, so twenty five times ten power of six. 
okay, meter square. So the whole thing is meter cube. Okay, so output. Okay, so we have three of them. Uh, output. Okay, so uh, the first one is the runoff. Okay, 40 cm. Okay, so 0 0.4. Okay, so this runoff is uh, okay. So five hundred. The whole area of the watershed is five hundred. Okay, five hundred kilometers square, and this is twenty-five times ten power of six uh, meters square. Okay, or 25 kilometer square. Okay, 25. Okay, so the runoff is the one that. Uh, moves out from the. Reservoir. Okay. So this is the place that we are going to. Um, actually, the whole place, lah, okay, the whole watershed that we are going to find. Okay, but the storage is only happens in the reservoir. Okay. The storage uh, is in the reservoir. Okay, but the run, the runoff is uh, moving out from the um, reservoir here. Okay. So 0 0.4 times the area. Okay, the area of the whole watershed is 500, uh, 500 kilometers square. Okay, so 10 power of 6. Uh, okay, so minus uh, the area of reservoir 25. Okay, so this will be the unit in meter cube. Is that okay? Okay, and then we have uh, evaporations. Okay, so the evaporations uh, calculation will be same as the rainfall. Okay, so evaporation, but the evaporation happens here in the uh, reservoir. Okay, so evaporation is One point five. Okay, one point five meter times the area is twenty five ten power of six. Okay, and the last one is outflow. Okay, outflow also the output. Okay, so the unit uh, <clears throat> for the outflow is 6.5 meter cube per second. Okay, it's given in uh, the discharge rate. Huh? So 6.5 meter cube per second. Okay, 
So because uh, all this uh, data is is in annual, okay, annually, okay. So you have you can change it to per year, okay. So six point five meter cube per second, okay. So you can multiply with twenty four sixty sixty, okay. So this will be in meter cube per year. Okay, so all the units here is in, in a year. Okay, so at last uh, you can find the uh, changes in the storage. Okay, so you can find the changes of the storage. So if your input is if your input is greater than uh, output, okay, so that will be a gain in storage. Okay, if output is greater than input, then there will be a loss in storage okay so if you calculate this the changes in storage is uh, will be equal to um, 23.73 uh, 10 power of 6 meter Okay, any question? Is it clear uh, with the calculations why we have, uh, how we calculate this? Outflow need to multiply by another three six five. Oh yes, yes, correct. For a year, okay, good. For a year, for a year. Yeah, if you miss that uh, 365, then this unit, uh, this answer will be in a day. Okay, the outflow in a day. Okay, just wondering how do we know the runoff is outflow instead of into the reservoir? Okay, in a normal case, right? Uh, <clears throat> in a normal case, okay. So if this is the watershed that, are, that we are going to study, okay, if this is the reservoir, uh, this is the watershed uh, that we are going to study, okay. So if the question is talking about <clears throat> uh, it, it gives you a runoff, okay? It just mentioned runoff. Runoff means that the water that uh, 
uh, stay on the ground, okay, in the area here, in the in the area that you are studying. Okay, so this this arrow is the runoff. Okay, but it's still inside the uh, Okay, run off. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I think I made a mistake here. Again. Oh, okay. I think I made a mistake. Okay, I too focus on the answer that you wrote there. Okay, this run of uh, okay. yeah, yeah, you are right, uh, Matthias. Okay, okay, if you look at this diagram, uh, uh, this picture, okay, um, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, this runoff should be input. Okay, sorry, uh, runoff should be input in this case. Okay, not uh, uh, output. Okay, this runoff okay, should be under input. Why? Uh, because you can see in this diagram, okay, the water moves out from the reservoir, but it's still inside the watershed. Okay, it's still inside the watershed. So this is actually the um, the input. Okay, so where is the water comes from? It can be the precipitation. Okay, the precipitation not only uh, happen. I mean the raining. Uh, the rainfall is not only happen in the reservoir. It it happened in the whole watershed, right? Okay, so this runoff is actually part of the water coming from the precipitation. Okay, but this is the, the area that we are studying, this watershed. Okay, so this runoff is actually a gain. Okay, because it's still in inside this watershed. So this is a uh, it's is an input. Okay, this outflow is the water that after this watershed. So uh, I I draw an arrow here for the out, outflow. Okay, so the water can be from the reservoir or the further uh, runoff, surface runoff. Okay, so this is outflow. Okay. Huh? Okay, okay. Yeah, I think I, I missed out the part just now. Okay, but this diagram is correct. Okay, so the runoff is still inside the watershed. So this is again. Okay, the runoff. So after this watershed, the water that's moved out from this watershed is considered as outflow. So this outflow can be the runoff. Okay. Huh? So this is output. So as long as the runoff is staying inside the watershed, then there will be a input. Okay, it should be a input. Okay, the water that flows out from the watershed, okay, like uh, the normal uh, surface runoff, and then the evaporation. So that that is considered as output. Okay, so that's why you need to uh, try to calculate, okay, and see the answer is correct or not. Okay. So the final answer that you get should be 23.73. Uh? Okay, so these two is the gain and these two uh, are the output. Okay, the loss.
Okay, have anyone checked this? Has anyone checked? 23.73. Okay, so according to the formula input minus output, so the answer should be negative. Okay, yes. Okay, so good huh, that you have tried. Okay, so according to the general formula, okay, you get negative 23.73, right? So negative 23 means that the final answer is uh, 23.73, then in, in, in the bracket, loss. You can write your answer in negative, okay? So we understand that it is a loss, okay? Or you can uh, simplify your answer your final answer as 23.73 because we know that uh, the volume shouldn't be negative, right? So 23.73 and then in bracket, you put a loss. Either way, uh, okay, both are acceptable. Okay, I think I answer uh, Zhang Hao and Wei Han uh, together. Okay. Negative 48. Okay, Zhang Hao and Wei Han, uh, both of you get 23.73, right? Okay. Okay, so thank you. Huh? Right. So Matthias, you can check again huh? okay, for your calculation. Okay, should be no problem now. Okay, so I hope you all clear with the diagram huh, that I draw here. Okay. I know the, uh, especially the runoff part is a bit confusing. Huh? But as long as you know that the water is, is still flowing in inside the watershed, then it is still as input, okay? Consider as input. In a normal case, uh, runoff uh, most of the time consider as uh, output, okay? Depends on the condition. Huh? Okay, so moving on, we have the reservoir, okay? So reservoir is, uh, it can be uh, in that uh, happen in natural okay or sometimes it can be a uh, artificial okay so or we call it a uh, artificial impoundments okay so for the uh, artificial that means uh, we block the uh, maybe a river okay and after some times uh, the water will accumulate and then store in the storage okay that we call it as a reservoir okay so most of the time uh, this happen when we need to build a dam, okay? Uh, so the so a, a dam will be built and then the reservoir will will be formed, okay? So normally uh, it has a multiple purpose. For example, for irrigations, okay, or hydropower, uh, hydroelectric, okay. So we build this reservoir, okay. Uh, to optimize the development of the surface water flow, okay, where natural storage is not available. So it means that in that area, uh, there is no uh, water, okay, no natural storage, then, um, yes, uh, Weijie, so we can use, uh, it, it can have many purposes, okay, many purposes, okay, so one of them uh, is flood control, okay, or for irrigations, uh, for hydropower generations. Okay, so it depends on the uh, uh, what is the need at that area. Okay, so reservoir it depends uh, <clears throat> upon the inflow available. Okay, so like in your calculation just now. Okay, if the inflow or the input uh, um, 
Okay, if the inflow or the input is always greater, then there is no storage required. Okay, so you don't have to uh, build the reservoir. Okay, but if the inflow is small but the demand is high, a large reservoir capacity is required. Okay, we can do the calculations. Okay, and uh, uh, get some data from that area. Okay, and see whether a reservoir is needed or not. Okay, so um, the volume of reservoir. Okay, um, so here are the some of the terms. Huh? Okay, yield is the volume of water which can be withdrawn from a reservoir in a specified period of time. Okay, so yield means that uh, like a, a a buffer zone. Okay, that the volume of water can be withdrawn. Okay, safe yield. Or firm U is the maximum quantity of water that can be guaranteed okay, during a critical dry period. The minimum uh, water that can store okay, in the reservoir. Okay, or the maximum quantity of water that can be supplied during the critical period. Okay, so that is called safe U. Okay, so normally we we'll label it uh, in the uh, the, I mean the water level in the in the reservoir. Okay, so where, where is the uh, area, uh, the level for the safe U? Okay, where is the U? Okay, so to estimate the volume of reservoir, we have two methods. Okay, so the first one is mass curve method. Okay, so this will uh, need to draw a, a to plot a graph. Okay, so that is mass curve, and the other one is analytic. Uh, method. So this is a uh, purely calculation. Okay, so two methods. All right. So the first one is the mass curve method. Okay. So the reservoir capacity is determined uh, from the accumulated mass inflow and also the accumulated demand curves. Okay. Uh, okay. So this this is the uh, procedures, huh? okay. Prepare the accumulated mass inflow curve from the stream hydrograph, okay. And then we will prepare the accumulated demand, okay. So first one we prepare the inflow, uh, and then we have the demand, okay. Demand or outflow. And the third step is draw the tangent lines that are parallel to the accumulated demand curve, okay. So this one I will explain later. Measure the vertical distance between the tangent line and the uh, mass inflow curve. Okay, and then we label it as V1, V2, V3, and so on. Okay, depends on how many cycles they have. Okay, so this uh, this is the mass curve uh, chart. Okay, or graph. Okay, so you can see uh, based on the procedure just now. Okay, so first step is you find the accumulated inflow. Okay, so we can see this curve. Okay, so this is the accumulated inflow. So you just add up. Okay, so the time can be uh, by usually is by month. Okay, by month. Okay, so you add up each month uh, of the inflow. Okay, and then you you form a, a curve. Okay, and then the next step is. Uh, you calculate the demand, the monthly demand. Okay, so accumulated demand. So uh, the same thing. You just add up the demand, uh, the monthly demand, and then it will have a line. Okay, a straight line. Okay, provided it is a, a fixed demand uh, of every month. Okay, so but normally it is a, a straight line. Okay. It will be a straight line. Okay, and then the third step, okay, you can draw a tangent line. Okay, the tangent line must be parallel to the accumulated demand line. Okay, so we can see this line is there are these two lines. They are parallel. Okay, parallel. Okay, so you draw this tangent line. Okay, go to the. Okay, sometimes this, this uh, 
line number two, uh, the accumulated demand is not touching any point uh, in the accumulated inflow. Okay, so you need to uh, move the tangent line to cross. Okay, uh, the maximum and minimum point. Okay, maximum and minimum point. Okay, so after you get this, uh, after you draw this tangent line, okay, that crossing the maximum and minimum point. Okay, here should have one line. Uh. Here should have one line, tangent line. Okay, so it's touching the minimum and maximum, maximum point. Okay, so number four is you can get the volume. Okay, so you label it. This this part is a V one. Okay, from the minimum uh, to the maximum. Okay, V one, and then you can see another cycle here. So V V two. Uh, so from the minimum to the maximum. Okay, so this is V two. Okay, so the maximum volume depends on how many volume that you get from the graph. Okay, so which whichever is bigger than that is the required storage. Okay, we, we select the highest volume. Okay, so from the graph you can see V1 is the highest. Lah. Okay, so V1 is the required storage uh, for this uh, reservoir. Okay, so that is the step uh, for the mass curve method. Okay, the second method is uh, analytical method. Okay, we have the okay, capacity from the net uh, inflow and demand. Okay, the sum of the storage. Okay, so this I will just explain from the procedures here. Okay, so uh, to perform this analytical method, okay, you need to uh, uh, draw a table. Okay, so the net inflow. Okay. So usually the inflow and demand is given. OK, these two are given. OK, so I1, I2, I3, D1, D2, D3. OK, and the formula starts here. OK, you have to find the deficiency first. OK, deficiency. So demand minus inflow. OK, like in this calculation, demand minus inflow for the third column. OK, and the cumulative deficiency. OK, so then the first row is the same as F1. OK, these two are the same values. And then uh, the second column is the cumulative, right? So cumulative, this F1 plus this F2. OK, then you get here, CF2. OK, same as the third row, OK, uh, CF2 plus F3, OK? So we just find the accumulated uh, deficiency for the last row. OK, and there's a small look here. You can see if the CF is negative, so you just put zero. OK. If it's negative, then you put zero. So the calculation is uh, quite simple. OK, so after that, <clears throat> the maximum cumulative, OK, you can determine from the last column uh, the largest value. OK, the largest uh, volume will be the storage. OK, the required storage for the reservoir. OK, so uh, I have one example here. Right. Uh, compute uh, the storage requirement needed for an impounding reservoir for a constant draft. OK, draft means the output. Uh, OK, constant. Uh, 23 uh, million liter per kilometer square per month of 30.4 days. OK, in average uh, with the given monthly net uh, river inflow for a critical year. OK, so we have uh, 15 months OK, with the given inflow. OK, and the outflow is 23. Constant, OK, means that every month is 23. OK, so here. You can try and do for the mass curve solution. OK, the first method. OK, 
So remember in the in this method, okay, before you plot the graph, uh, okay, okay, before you plot the graph, okay, you have to draw a table. Okay, so this is month. Okay, and then you have inflow, outflow. Okay, so these are given. Okay, and then what was the last? Uh, I mean the the next. Okay, you have to find the accumulated inflow, right? And then you also need to find the accumulated outflow. Okay, these two are. Okay, so I just put summation of I and summation of outflow. Okay, so this you have to find it. Okay, these two column, and then you can plot the graph. Okay, so you don't have to plot the graph, huh? you just uh, Calculate uh, the accumulated inflow and outflow. Okay, so the the fourth column, okay, ninety four plus one two two, okay, and then plus forty five, plus five until uh, fifteen months, okay, until thirty three. Okay. So the first one is 94, first month, uh, 94. Okay, so 94 plus 1, 2, 2, okay, you get 216. Okay, I just write the field for you. And then you plus uh, 45, you get 261, okay, and so on. Okay, and for the outflow is 23. Okay, it's constant. So 23 plus 23, 46. Okay, plus 23, 69 and so on. Okay, so this is how you get uh, these two uh, column. Okay, so after you get all the data, okay, all the result, then you can plot the graph like this. Okay, so you can see the blue line is the inflow. Okay, blue line is the inflow. So you get the accumulated inflow. So first point, second point, third point. Okay, and uh, until the 15 months. Okay, and then for the draft uh, or the outflow, okay, the outflow is uh, uh, every month is 23. Okay, so you just plot it. Okay, so after you get these two lines, blue and red, okay, then you draw a tangent. Okay, like I mentioned just now, uh, the, the outflow is not always touching the, the inflow. Uh, uh, curve. Okay, so you have to draw a tangent line that touching the minimum point. Okay, and maximum point. Right. So this is by estimation. So uh, the answer can be different uh, from, I mean, from each other. Okay, you can be you can get a different answer but about the same, okay? So you can draw this tangent line by uh, using the, a ruler, okay? Then you just move uh, move the ruler, okay? And then touch uh, the point, okay? So after that, uh, after you plot these two lines, uh, you draw these uh, two tangent line. then this is the V, okay, the volume. So in this case, we only have one V. Okay, you can see only one uh, cycle, right? I call it a cycle, but it's not actually uh, the proper term, lah. Okay, one cycle. Okay, so this is the volume. Okay, so volume you can uh, from the graph you can you can uh, check. Okay, what is the the volume? So four hundred twenty minus uh, two ninety five. Okay, two hundred ninety five. 
So here you can write the required uh, storage capacity is equal to 125. Okay, and the unit is a uh, million liter per kilometer square. Okay, is that clear? For the steps. Okay, if there is more than one cycle, okay, if you get V1 and then V2, okay, so whichever uh, higher in the value, uh, then that will be the storage capacity. Okay. Can we proceed to the second method? Okay. What if the tangent for two high point does not lie to the which one? Because what if the tangent for Okay, uh, okay, that's how I think you mean here, right? Uh, this point. Okay, this is this is something also unusual. You it, it shall not touching another point here. Okay, actually, you can draw up to uh, actually you, you don't have to extend the line up to this point okay you can stop somewhere here okay if you look at the uh, a normal okay from the from a perfect perfect uh, chart uh, okay so you can see the line is actually like this okay because it's accumulated so eventually the curve will uh, the curve will goes up, right? So the line will cross the the curve. Okay, but actually you can just draw and stop here somewhere here. Okay, it doesn't have to extend it. Okay, as long as this is the maximum point and to the minimum point. Okay, then that is the volume over here okay for the next cycle okay for the next cycle is here so the minimum okay the minimum is from the maximum point from the previous cycle okay to the maximum point here okay so the, the reason why it extend the the tangent line eh, is for the second second curve uh, second cycle sorry second cycle because the minimum point is from the maximum point from first cycle okay then you draw the uh, tangent line for the maximum point okay and find the oh sorry this is spill huh? okay spill is another thing huh? Okay, spill is the water that is uh, a, a waste. Okay, so sometimes the water will be overflow. Okay, after the storage is full. Okay, so that is spill. Okay, if you want to find the spill, then you can extend the the, the tangent line. Okay, for each uh, volume, okay, you find the maximum point and minimum point. Okay. So normally we don't extend it unless you have to find the spill. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, next we look at the analytical uh, method. Okay, after this, we'll take a short break. Huh? Okay, so the analytical method. Okay, so. Um, okay, so this you have to draw a table. Okay, to find the deficiency. So uh, as usual here is the month inflow outflow. Okay, these three are given. Okay, then the next one is the deficiency. Okay, so this is outflow minus inflow. Okay, so outflow minus inflow. And then here is the cumulative. Okay, cumulative. Okay, so from the data, uh, okay, so I write the first three. Huh? One, two, two, forty-five. Okay, so the deficiency is outflow minus inflow. Okay, so 23 minus 94. So we get uh, negative 71. Okay. Uh, here you get negative 99, negative 22. Okay, all negative. Huh? So I write more. Okay, 5, 23, 23. Okay, so 23 minus 5 is 18, 18. Okay, so after you have a uh, calculate for the fourth uh, column, okay, outflow minus inflow, then for the accumulated deficiency, okay, so remember the, the, the remark just now, okay, if you get a negative value, so you just put a zero, okay, in the cumulative uh, deficiency, okay. So this also negative, uh, sorry, uh, zero. Okay, so here also negative, you get zero. Okay, so here is a positive value. Okay, so uh, cumulative, so zero plus 18, you get 18. So starting from here, you have a positive value. Huh? So 18 plus 18, 36. Okay, so and so on. So uh, you can continue okay, and try. So the maximum value that you get, uh, the required storage capacity is equal to 124. Okay, so this is my analytical uh, method. Any question for this part? So this is only uh, by calculation. Huh? Okay, you find the accumulated deficiency until you get the max, the highest value. Okay, then there will be the uh, capacity. Okay.
So after the short break, I will show you the full answer la, for this analytical part. Okay, you may have a try first. Huh? See whether you get the same or not. Okay, so if no question, we'll take a short break now. Uh, so we'll continue at uh, 10 minutes break. Huh? Okay, so 9.57. Huh? Okay, we'll continue at 9.57. Uh, Okay. Okay, yes.
Okay, wait, Han. Uh, the final unit, uh, if based on the based on this question. Okay, it's given in million liter per kilometer square. Okay. So one hundred and twenty four million liter per kilometer square. So this is the storage capacity. Okay, but usually uh, the the unit for um I mean the the, the vol is, is in volume, huh? the capacity is in volume. Okay, we have. Okay, so storage usually in volume, but this question is in uh, liter per kilometer square. Okay. Okay, and then uh, okay, just now one of you asked me the okay, Jin Tao, uh, Jin Tao. Okay, so you were asking me about the the surface runoff. So this is the watershed. Okay, so let's say this is a reservoir. Okay. So of course in the watershed it has the uh, runoff. Okay, so it can be go into the reservoir or it can go out to the reservoir. Okay, let's say this is the higher, uh, the area with higher elevation. Okay. Okay, so let's say this, this place is higher elevation and here is the uh, lower ele elevation. Okay, and here is the much lower. So this is outflow. Okay, so this line, uh, this arrow, this line is all the surface runoff. Okay, so this part, this part is the surface runoff. Okay, so as long as the water stays in the watershed, okay, so this is called the uh, this there are there are the surface runoff and there are gain, okay, in the watershed. Okay, so just now you asked me. Okay, why need to uh, minus the reservoir area? Okay, watershed area minus the reservoir area because you see the surface runoff, it they are moving outside the outside the reservoir. Okay, this is reservoir. Okay, so if you want to calculate the surface runoff, uh, uh, volume okay so you have to minus the area of reservoir okay so that you get you get the because this is only some lines that from uh, uh, just a sketch okay of the surface runoff so it's actually all around the uh, the area here okay outside the reservoir
uh, did I answer your question, uh, Jin Tao? Okay, Yi Hao, you have another question. Huh? The reservoir will always located inside the watershed. Uh, okay, because in this question, okay, it mentioned about the watershed, okay, and uh, we have reservoir. So this is only by, by uh, assumption, okay. Okay, watershed uh, is an area, a larger area, okay, that we are studying, okay, and of course there will be a, if the question mentioned about the reservoirs, then for sure the reservoir is inside the watershed, okay, that is where the water store, okay, water store at. Okay, Yihao. Mm, okay, so the service runoff, uh, just now in the, in the, uh, when we do the calculation, I draw the image too, too, too small. Okay, so now I uh, enlarge it. Okay, so, so that you can see it clearer. Okay, so you can see actually the service runoff is actually, it can, it can be going into the reservoir or going out from the reservoir. Depends on the, 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 the elevations. Okay, okay, from a higher elevation to the lower, then it will move to the reservoir. Okay, and then for the lower place, then it will move up. But it's still here, outside, uh, in inside the watershed. Okay, and then for the rainfall and evaporation. Okay, so this is uh, okay. Okay, you see, uh, the rainfall is actually happens everywhere, right? All over the watershed. Okay, and just now I, when I explained the runoff, okay, so the water from the runoff, uh, mainly from the rainfall. Okay, so when we calculate the annual rainfall, okay, we only calculate, we only uh, consider the area in the reservoir. Okay. Right. Because the runoff is actually also part from the uh, rainfall. Okay. So your question is something not, uh, I mean, you're asking not that correctly. Yeah. Okay. It's not that the water only, the, the, the rainfall and evaporation only happen in the reservoir. It's not like that. Huh? The rainfall is actually happens in the watershed, okay, but the water that goes into the reservoir, okay, when we calculate for the rainfall and the evaporation, we only consider something happens in the reservoir. Okay. Okay, so next we have the alternative sources of the water supply. Huh? So this is the second uh, subtopic. Okay, so here we will see um, what kind of water supply uh, sources. Huh? Okay. So how can we develop the fresh water resources in a safe, renewable manner? So most of the country, they rely on the fresh water. Okay, fresh water. So, um, so how can we develop the, uh, the these uh, resources? Okay, in a safe and then in a renewable manner. Renewable here means that is uh, they are sustainable. Okay, we can uh, always obtain the 
uh, these, these resources. Okay. So here uh, we'll discuss on the uh, on a few um, alternative sources. Okay. So water conservation. Okay. So this is uh, very important. Uh, okay. Water conservation so that we will not uh, simply uh, pollute uh, the water sources. Okay. And then we have the wastewater reuse. Okay. Uh, the storm water uh, reuse. Okay, brackish and the saline water converse, conversions, interbasin transfer, and also uh, I will include some other uh, relevant technologies. Okay, so these uh, six methods, uh, six uh, sources, okay, six sources, is we can guarantee the adequate uh, water quantity. Okay, not only the water quantity, we can also can supply appropriate uh, water quality okay with good quality okay so by the way uh, do you all know what is uh, storm water storm water can be uh, a rainfall okay rainwater or snow okay storm water Okay, so the water conservations, okay, is actually is a is a practice, uh, okay, of using the uh, water that uh, okay we can use the water more efficiently, uh, okay, to reduce any uh, unnecessary water uh, uh, um, usage, okay. So it's it's all about the efficiency of how we use the water. So um, no wastage uh, okay, on the water. So this is uh, the main uh, reason uh, okay, or main factors that we can have a sustainable uh, water supply okay, from fresh water. So it takes place in any of the water use sectors like in urban, agricultural, industrial, municipal. Okay? And they are most environmentally uh, friendly. Okay? So the conservation uh, measures that we can always see is the soft measure, so by public educations, okay, or awareness, okay, and then the hard measures, so uh, can be by regulations and some mandatory water bans, okay. So there are hard measures, okay. So the political and the public response to conservation measures and are significant. They are made effectively and consistently. So many conservation measures are implemented during a uh, job. Okay. So uh, the water conservation practice in Malaysia, okay, is that uh, is low, uh, okay, what I can say. Okay, because uh, we have a uh, plenty of the water supply, okay, and our uh, water bill, water bill uh, is also very low. Uh, the water tariff, okay, so it makes that the water conservation uh, or the awareness uh, uh, is low here. Okay, so the next one is the wastewater reuse. Okay, so what wastewater reuse or uh, more commonly known as water reclamation. Okay, you can see the words here. Okay, the terms water reuse or water uh, reclamation. Okay, so wastewater reuse means that we can use the water uh, repeatedly. Okay, so water can and should be recycled. So for the water reuse, uh, the treatment of water to meet the predefined water quality criteria. So every water reuse have a have a must. You must know the uh, the purpose of why the water should be reuse okay so the treatment can be applied accordingly so for example if you want to reuse the wastewater as for drinking water okay so you have to make sure it follows the drinking water standard okay then the treatment will be uh, relatively higher okay because we use it for drinking so make sure there's no harmful uh, pathogens okay no uh, solids uh, and then the 
Okay, for the water quality part, I will explain uh, more details in topic three. Eh? Okay, for the drinking water standard. Okay, so in the water drink, uh, drink, uh, in the drinking water, we need to have uh, uh, some criteria. Okay, like it has no odors, okay, tasteless, and then uh, uh, like I mentioned just now, the pathogens. Okay, no pathogens. But we have uh, another parameters which we call it E. coli. Uh, e. coli. Uh, we, we will test the. Uh, is there any existence of the uh, E. coli? Okay. Okay, and then for other purposes such as the irrigations. Okay, for irrigations uh, for the crops. Okay, so you still need to treat until a certain uh, level. Okay, so that the water can be reused. Okay, used to water the crops. Okay, so some other wastewater reuse. Uh, maybe they use it for uh, um, cooling, cooling of the machines. Okay, uh, so for cooling part, uh, then we we have we can treat the water uh, with a lower standard. Okay, because we are not con uh, consuming it. Okay, so we can be lower standard. So it depends uh, on the goals okay, of what is the water used for. Right, so the next one is the wastewater uh, okay, reuse, okay, mainly at the area where the rainfall is low, the evaporation is high. Okay, so this because of the, uh, um, the place that we are uh, having the um, no, no, no storage of the water. Okay, so like you learned just now, the in inflow is uh, lower than the outflow. Okay, so the rainfall is low, and then the evaporation is high. Okay, so then we tend to use the wastewater reuse method. Okay, so other factors like irrigation water use is intense, and then the interbasin transfer of waters are being practiced or planned. Okay, so we can use the wastewater reuse method. Then the environmental regulations, uh, water scarcity and the economic factors um, are expected to increase the popularity of reuse. Okay, so some benefits uh, include improved uh, quality of service water and preservations of high quality water for portable consumption. Portable means uh, uh, drinkable, okay, can be drink. Mm. Okay, so this wastewater reuse uh, currently practice in. Uh, if you remember, we have uh, I've mentioned about uh, some countries that are using uh, this wastewater reuse. For example, in Singapore, okay, because this uh, becomes an important solution, okay, to reduce the stress on the uh, primary water resources because they have low in the uh, reservoir, okay, they have uh, no uh, cash, less uh, catchment area, okay, to store the water, so they tend to use this wastewater reuse. Okay, they even produce it as a uh, drinking water in Singapore. Okay, using the wastewater. Okay, so um, for the direct reuse, uh, okay, when you call uh, call it as a direct reuse, the wastewater is treated and then delivered to users. Okay, without intervening travel dilutions in natural surface water or groundwater bodies means that the water will be collected okay the wastewater will be collected and then uh, treated and uh, delivered to the users okay wait here. if the demand of water is extremely high then water reclamation also is considered as conventional way Um, I don't really get it. Huh? What do you mean by uh, 
conventional way? In 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 what terms? Okay, if the water demand is high and when the uh, the country has small catchment area to store the water, okay, so they tend to re reuse the wastewater. Okay, so it's a water reclamation. What do you mean a conventional way here? Using the fresh water? Okay, maybe you refer to uh, using a fresh water as a conventional way. Eh? Okay, but this is uh, something uh, uh, more extreme. Okay, for those countries that are having uh, scarce, scarcity of the fresh water, okay, they will tend to reuse the wastewater. Like in Malaysia, we have plenty of water. Uh, we don't really reuse the wastewater for for high higher end like drinking water okay we don't go that extreme okay because we have plenty of water okay okay the second uh, is the indirect reuse okay indirect reuse is uh, involves a middle step between the generations of reclaimed water and its reuse okay okay means that they they will collect the wastewater Okay, and then in the middle step, they will uh, discharge and then return and mixing with another water sources. Okay, before reuse. Okay, so for indirect reuse, normally uh, it is for uh, lower standards uh, reuse. Okay, like for the cooling or washing. Okay, so or flushing. Yeah, in some uh, buildings, they they have this. Uh, system okay they use it the you they use the 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 wastewater okay to flush the toilet okay so this is uh under indirect re reuse okay they will sometimes uh, mix with uh, the storm water uh okay then the last one is the recycling refers to two or more consecutive uses of water by the same business industry or person in a coordinated plan manner sometimes with partial treatment between uh, users okay so you had it it involves uh, two or more cons consecutive uses of water so it means that the water can be used uh, repeatedly okay before discharge it, okay under the same business or industry okay in direct reuse and also indirect re reuse okay after they use the water they will discharge okay and then need to treat again okay recycling is more to like the flushing that i mentioned just now okay recycling so there there are some uh, minor uh, difference uh, okay between these three okay uh, the most widely available and least uh, variable sources of wastewater for reuse is municipal wastewater okay the reason is the municipal wastewater is much easier to control and treated okay compared to industrial uh, wastewater okay so municipal most of the time they have the high in organic uh, matter okay and then they also consist of the detergents okay so most of the uh, pollutants they are known okay they are known pollutants so unlike the the industri industrial uh, wastewater, the variation are much higher. Okay, so the treatment will be become more complex. Okay, and uh, sometimes it did, it needs a different um, uh, dosage of the chemicals. Okay, we need to do some calculations for that. Okay, so for the municipal wastewater, we usually treat it by biological process. Okay. Uh, the activated sludge, right? So it is uh, much easier, okay, for the municipal wastewater uh, treatment. Okay, can be relied on to provide a dependable continuous flow, having 
uh, fairly stable physical, chemical and biological characteristic. Okay. Manufacturing processes can contribute significantly to the amount of wastewater, but their constituents in industrial waste may limit option for reusing them. Okay, so like I uh, explained just now, so industrial waste uh, has much more uh, pollutants, unpredictable pollutants, okay, because they involve uh, more chemicals uh, used. Uh, return agriculture flows from irrigation projects are often contaminated with salts uh, that leach from the soil, and so the treatment is needed. Okay, so they have the salt. Uh, why? Uh? Because the water that, um, when the plants they absorb the water from from the root, uh, okay, the salts will left behind in the soil, okay, and then they will accumulate. So you can see the soil uh, will. The salts will leach uh, from the soil, okay, and uh, uh, may affect the uh, groundwater, okay. So usually the runoff will need uh, treatment, okay, uh, the agriculture uh, runoff. To restore the wastewater to drinking water quality, okay, tertiary or advanced treatment process are usually required. Okay, so um, so like in Singapore, uh, they use the wastewater uh, and then treat it until the drinking water quality. Okay, so more treatment will be needed. Okay, so the tertiary or advanced treatment. So the tertiary and advanced treatment is not always uh, required in a, a water treatment plant or wastewater treatment plant. Depends on the uh, quality of the water that you are going to. Uh, uh, provide. Okay, so in for example, in the drinking water uh, quality, okay, so the advanced treatment here uh, that might needed uh, can be the membrane filtration. Okay, uh, so that is something um, usually the advanced treatment process uh, is required when a certain parameters couldn't be. Uh, achieve okay after the the typical or the common uh, process okay so at that time we will need the advanced treatment so it all depends on the uh, the nature of the wastewater or water okay the next one is the storm water reuse or harvesting Okay, so the stormwater here, uh, okay, for example, the surface runoff. Okay, surface runoff also uh, one of the uh, stormwater. Okay, so when the surface runoff, it travels uh, in a greater distance, okay, over the, the impervious surface, means it's not able to infiltrate. Okay, so that it, that is the surface runoff. Okay, then the more it travels, then the more contaminated it will be. Okay. Um, so for the rainwater uh, harvesting, okay, for example, uh, the one of the uh, example in the stormwater is the rainwater. So we can collect the water, right, from the rainfall, okay, from precipitations. Um, Okay, but uh, the rainwater harvesting system must be uh, properly designed and maintained, okay, in order to collect the water more efficiently, uh, okay, so to avoid any contamination, because once it gets contaminated like the surface runoff, surface runoff has no choice, okay, it reached the ground and once it's reached the ground, then it will start uh, get contaminated, okay, and the treatment is needed. For rainwater, uh, if you design it properly, okay, for the collections, okay, then uh, you can save the cost for the treatment part, okay. It require the least uh, treatment. Alright. So normally the treatment that can be used, okay, for the stormwater uh, uh, reuse, for example, uh, a simple uh, filtration, okay, filtration and uh, disinfection. Okay. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, some of the successful cases, okay, using the this uh, collecting the storm water for reuse. So in the lakes, uh, wetlands, rainwater storage tank. Okay, uh, and then you may collect the storm water for industrial reuse. Okay, urban reuse. Okay, and also we have this aquifer storage and recovery ASR. Okay, this I will explain in the next slide uh, for the technologies. Okay, under uh, uh, different technologies. Uh, okay, ASR. But it relates to the stormwater. Okay, if you know what is aquifer, then you know uh, why it is relates to the stormwater. Okay, I will explain it later on. The storage of surface water um, for irrigation pond, reuse pond, or recycling ponds. And it is one of the best sources of alternative water supply for non portable users. Okay, so you can see the keywords uh, is for non portable use. And of course, if you want it to be a uh, portable use, then you require uh, some, uh, some other treatment, okay, especially the disinfection. Okay, so the next one is the brackish and saline water conservation. Okay, so for water supply uh, engineers, desalination refers to the removal of salts from brackish water and seawater. Okay, so you can see the definition. Uh, the uh, the brackish was water they are slightly salty. Okay, and uh, seawater. Okay. So you can see uh, normally the fresh water, okay, for example from the river, okay, or from the lake, they have less than 1,000 milligram per liter of total dissolved solid. So this total dissolved solid will, uh, uh, it refers to the salt, uh, okay, refer to the salt, or some minerals, okay, ions, okay, so they are under the total dissolved solids. So and then brackish, uh, 1,000 to 5,000 milligram per liter. And then you can see the uh, each concentration, uh, saline, and then sea water, and then the brine, okay, brine water. Okay, so one of the most expensive sources of alternative water supply, okay, because we use the reverse uh, osmosis, uh, okay relatively high reliability of the supply compared with other. Okay, they have high reliability because the water that after uh, desalination, uh, they are uh, very clean. Okay, they are, uh, they are, they are clean, uh, okay. They have uh, nothing after the reverse osmosis, uh, okay. Everything can be removed. Okay, so the technologies for desalination, uh, okay, uh, or to treat the, not only desalination, uh, to treat the brackish and saline water, okay, so we have distillation, condensation, so I'm sure you know what is distillation, uh, okay, in your lab, uh, maybe during your secondary school, uh, you, you enter the lab, you have to see the distilled water, okay, how is the condensation um, works, Okay, most developed and common form of desalination. Okay, it removes the minerals and salts from saline water. Okay, distillation is the use of heat energy to evaporate the water. Okay, and collect its condensate with uh, within the same closed system. Okay, so the dissolved solid will be remain in the another uh, compartment. Okay, so you collect the Condense it. Uh, okay, membrane filtrations include the electrodiosis, uh, reversal, reverse osmosis. Okay, reverse osmosis also uh, is called hyper filtrations. Okay, now don't filtrations, ultra filtration, and micro filtration. Okay, so don't worry about this. Uh, this will be uh, taught in another topic. Okay, for the filtration part. Okay, you can see the different uh, nano, ultra, and micro. It's just because of the um, pore size. Okay, the pore size of the filtrations. So, 
Okay, uh, okay, I'll not elaborate much uh, on this part. Okay, iron exchange. Okay, uh, the exchange of one type of iron for another. Okay, of the same charge uh, by using uh, resin. Okay, resin is the organic substances. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So if in your assignment you will need this iron exchange, then you will study what is that. Okay, you know. Okay, since the brackish and saline water, okay, the desalination is so uh, successful, right? The the water after treatment is so clean. Okay, but it's, it brings a lot of disadvantages. Okay, the drawbacks here. So for example, the management and the disposal of the waste. Okay. Actually, these two are the same. Okay. We dispose the, the brine. The brine is the salt. Okay. After you uh, extract okay, the water, you get the water, the clean water. So if for sure you left uh, the something behind, right? The brine. Okay. So how are you going to uh, manage and dispose it? Okay. So that is uh, one issue. And then the another issue is the energy use. Okay. The energy consumptions of the quantities of the source water and selected uh, treatment technologies. Okay, so it uh, requires high energy consumption. Okay, and then for the reverse osmosis, it consumes uh, more energy okay, of the dry pump to create uh, and needed a uh, high pressure. Okay. Okay, the fifth one is the interbasin transfer. Okay, so interbasin transfer also not that common. Huh? Okay, not that common, but it's one of the way uh, uh, to get the fresh water. So the man-made uh, conveyance uh, scheme, which moves the water from one water basin where it is available. Available here means that the storage is always uh, enough. Okay, always sufficient. Okay, it moved from this place to another basin where the water is less available. Okay, to be utilized better for human development. So in short, we move the water from one basin to another basin, from one area to another area. Okay, so the primary concern is the harm that occur to the third parties once the transfer begins. Okay, so it will affect the ecosystem. Okay, what affects the third parties? So the environment and the wildlife. Okay, so and also the agricultural and the commercial interest. Okay, although water transfer can sometimes appear relatively low in cost compared with other source of water because it's just uh, transport the water. Okay, the cost is only the transportation. So it is important to consider the impacts to the Third parties as well. Okay, so there's an act to protect the, this uh, the environment. Okay, so you cannot simply uh, transport the water from one place to another place. Okay, so other relevant technologies. So like I uh, said just now, the ASR. Okay, so this is the uh, aquifer. is is like a well. Okay, underground. Okay, uh, we can store the water, the fresh water, uh, uh, under the ground. Huh? Okay, so it's a process that involving the storing water in an aquifer, and then you can recharge it. Okay, it means that you can uh, get the water. Okay, by recharging it. Okay, during the wet. Uh, oh, sorry, you can store the water. Uh, a recharge is is the get the water okay, during the wet periods and then you can remove it during the dry periods when it is uh, needed. Okay, you can get, get the water by uh, recharge, uh, pumping it up okay, to the uh, when it when, when you need it. Okay, so the advantages of this ASR is that it can eliminate the evaporative losses. Okay, like for example in the River or lakes uh, or reservoir, okay. The the larger the area, okay, you have a larger surface area, then the evaporation will be higher, okay. So the advantages in this uh, ASR is that it eliminates the 
evaporative because it's stored underground. Okay. Uh, so it's not a new concept have been used in USA. Uh, for your information, uh, in USA, they rely uh, quite a lot on the uh, groundwater. Okay. So they have this kind of uh, technologies. Okay. So they use this ASR. Okay, so this is uh, how it looks. Huh? Discharge, uh, recharge and discharge. So when the water, uh, during the wet season, huh? okay, when there's a lot of uh, rainwater, okay, so the water will flows into the, uh, this ASR, okay, so and it store the fresh water underground. Okay, so when you need it, then you will discharge the fresh water, okay, by using the pressure, okay, to push the water uh, back to the uh, to the users, okay. Okay, other relevant uh, technologies. The uh, second example is the cloud seeding, uh, okay. But cloud seeding, uh, okay. I'm sure also you have uh, heard of it. Uh, a method of increasing the rainfall, okay. Increase the rainfall. But it is the rarest source of water supply. We don't really use it for water supply. Okay, not that efficient. Okay, but it's, a, it's a one of the way. Uh, okay, no consensus in the uh, scientific uh, community about the effectiveness of the cloud seeding technology. In fact, we don't really uh, Yeah, yeah, uh, Vijay, this is a uh, human made rainfall, yes, cloud seeding. I think they use it for uh, for the drought, uh, the place, the area that are uh, facing uh, drought very seriously. Then they may tend to use this. Uh, this is always the last uh, option, uh, okay, the cloud seeding. In fact, the uh, interbasin uh, transfer is also, uh, is much better than the cloud seeding. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is the last part, right? The water use trend. Okay. So water use trend and forecasting. Uh, okay. So we have a water use sectors uh, factors that are affecting the water usage. Uh, techniques for forecasting the population's uh, water use forecasting. Okay. Okay, how much water does each individual needs? Okay, so the average person that needs a minimum of about five liters uh, of water per day to survive in a moderate climate at an average. So this is the minimum. Okay, every person needs five liters a day. Okay, to survive. Okay, just to survive. So for the minimum amount of water needed for drinking, cooking, means for others use. So it's about 50 liters. Okay, a day, a minimum. Okay, so now let's see how about other countries. The average person in Netherlands, they use only 27 gallons. Okay, about 100 liters. A day, okay. Uh, the average per Somalia, okay, use only nine point eight point nine liters, okay, less than ten liters uh, per day. So because they have a uh, uh, problems, uh, in get assessing the the fresh water, okay. So very uh, precious in the country, okay. The water is very precious. Okay, you can see the Malaysia, uh, in Malaysia. We use about 210 liters per day, which is one of the highest in the region. Okay, in comparison to Singapore and Thailand. Okay, so we use about 210. Okay, so this is the earth water compartments. Hmm. Okay, now that. Just to show you now, okay. Just to show you the earth water compartments by estimations. Mm, okay. Okay, water consumption around the world. 
Okay, the average. So US is still the highest. Uh, so about 550, uh, more than that. About six, 600 liters. Okay, Malaysia is 210. Okay, somewhere here. Okay, so this is uh, average, right? Average per person. So why is in U US is so high? Huh? Why is the water consumption is so high? Anyone uh, study this before? Why in some countries they they can be so much higher than in Malaysia 210 is is already above uh, what is recommended by WHO okay so but why in US they can achieve that high five, almost 600 liters has anyone uh, study or think of why is this happening So a lot of factors, right? So uh, not only the okay, only not only the domestic uh, use. Okay, we in the water sectors, uh, the water use sectors, we we can group into uh, domestic. Okay, and then we have the industrial use, and also the last one is the agriculture. Okay, so the more uh, the more advanced in one country, right, means the. Uh, in every industrial area, industrial sectors, there there needs water, okay, to produce something, okay. So like in US, they are they are all they are high in all the sectors, in domestic, in uh, industrial, and also the uh, agriculture, okay. Mm, okay, there are three major use for water, agricultural, industrial and residential, Res residential or domestic. Okay. So you can see in Asia, we have a uh, highest in agricultural. Okay. So uh, and then the statistics uh, in, the, in the world. Okay, so also the agriculture uh, consume the highest. Okay, does pipe leaking considered as one of the consumption of water or it is uh, just simply lost? Uh, it should be under loss, not, uh, uh, not under any, any sectors here. Okay, because the leaking is not always happen, right? So it's uh, when it's happened, uh, some repair will be immediately done. Okay, so the loss uh, uh, relative, relatively small. Okay, relatively small compared to the actual usage. Okay. Mm, so the. Okay, this is the graph uh, that uh, from 1900 to 2000. Okay, so when the industrialization started, uh, then you can see the trend of the industrial use getting higher. Okay, and agricultural due to the uh, for food production. Uh, okay, so uh, depends on the populations. So it's also getting higher. Okay, after 1940. Okay, so this statistics is until uh, 2000. So the next one, okay, you can see the, okay, even though this is in Malaysia, okay, this is in Malaysia. Um, okay, you can see something, uh, something interesting here. Okay, after 2010, 
Okay, there are some changes. Okay, can you see this? Can you see this part, this column? After 2010, you can see the domestic use. Uh, uh, previously, five around 5,000. Okay, of course, it will increase okay, over time because of the population. Okay, then after 2000, okay, it jumped okay, from 5,000 to 8,000. Okay, and uh, getting higher and higher, right? Uh, and then industrial, also the same, 3,000, about 4,000, and then it goes to 7,000. Okay, about uh, um, more than 50%. Huh? Okay, and then domestic, okay, this is the combination of these two, huh? two sectors. And then irrigations, irrigations from 20,000, okay, then it drops to 17,000, okay, and then it maintained, okay. So what is happening here in 2010? Okay, the use trend for domestic in, and industrial is going uh, higher and higher each year, each decade. Okay, but for the irrigations, it, it goes down. Huh? Okay, and then maintain at six, 16,000. Even though, okay, but this is a, a projection, uh, okay. Why water consumption in China is lower than Malaysia? Even they have higher industrial use section. Um, where, where do you see the, the data, uh, Rijit? mean this water consumption oh okay this is average average water use per person per day okay not uh, the total water uses usage okay some part in the, uh, some uh, maybe some district uh, in the area, uh, in the China they have uh, uh, the rural area especially they have uh, uh, less access to the fresh water okay or the water use so uh, they will be using uh, much lesser water okay so this is average uh, so not the uh, total. Right. Okay, so back to here. Okay, 2010 is a is a changes uh, in Malaysia uh, water use trend. Okay, so if you refer to this uh, uh, statistic, okay, or these projections, is actually coming from the uh, National Water Resources Study uh, from 2000 to 2050, okay? So based on the, uh, we have one program, uh, okay? We call it uh, Sustain National Development, okay? Sustain National Development uh, from 2011 to 2050. So it's actually targeted the water use trend uh, in the agricultural, uh, fisheries, industry, and tourism, okay, and others uh, sectors, lah, okay, to uh, how to use the water more efficiently, okay. So like I said just now, based on the statistic, right, the agricultural use is always the highest, okay, it's always the highest. So when we can reduce the water usage in these sectors, okay, then we can save a lot of water use. 
Okay, so in this uh, in, in Malaysia, okay, when we come up with this program, so they they do a lot of things Okay, they did a lot of thing, and uh, uh, for example, uh, to raise the awareness. Okay, and then they reuse the wastewater for irrigations. Okay. Uh, and then uh, they have uh, another concept uh, which call uh, more crops per drop. Okay, you may uh, Google it uh, if you want to know uh, know more about it. Okay, more crop for uh, more crop uh, per drop, right? Concept. And also they also did some uh, innovative uh, water supply and management uh, services. Okay, to help to reduce the wastage in the irrigation sector okay of the water use okay that's why you can see a, a, a huge drop here okay and then they can maintain okay hopefully in the in the future okay we can reduce more uh, or reduce the water uh, wastage in irrigation okay Okay, so uh, how about the water usage in the household? Okay, so um, in you can see in this breakdown, uh, the, the toilet use is the highest, okay, 20%. And then uh, clothes washer, shower, okay, faucet, uh, leaks, okay, uh, bath, okay, dishwasher, and others. Okay, so this is the average uh, indoor household water user. Uh. Okay, so what you can do is, if you want to save more water, you can target the highest uh, consumption part. Okay, for the toilet. Okay, some uh, you can see the modern uh, uh, toilets uh, nowadays. They have a smaller compartment for the water storage part. Okay, so when, and when every time you flush, you can uh, save more. Uh, you can use a uh, lesser uh, water. Okay. So that is uh, some innovative uh, to, to, to save the water. Okay. All right, agricultural water use. Okay. So normally uh, the water uh, usage on the irrigation part is the, is the, is the major part. Uh, okay. A method of providing plants with water from sources other than direct precipitation. Okay, so about 70% were uh, fresh water used in agricultural sector. Okay, most of the fresh water is used for irrigating crops. Okay, most irrigation practices are very inefficient and half evaporates before reaching the crops. Okay, so this uh, more research can be done. Uh, okay, how to uh, irrigate the crops uh, more efficiently. Okay. Uh, industrial water use, so about 20% of the world uh, fresh water use for manufactured goods, dispose of the waste, generate power. Okay, so se about 700 gallons uh, to, uh, okay, to produce a cotton t-shirt and 500,000 liters to make a car. Okay, so you cannot imagine how much water we use uh, in the industrial uh, sectors. Okay, uh, millions of gallons per day used in the computer chip factories for rinsing the chemicals at each stage of production. Okay. Okay, water use sectors. Okay. Right. Okay, so estimation of the future water use are fundamentals to efficient and equitable allocation of the water supplies. Okay, this estimation depends on them ability to forecast the changes in the populations, agriculture and industrial activity, okay, ecological, economical conditions, technology and social. 
Okay, decision on developing and allocating water resources must be based on the availability, quality, uh, type, and rate of use of the resource. So this is the factors that affecting the uh, for the water uh, use uh, from the water resources. Okay. Community water use projection are always needed for distribution system and treatment plant design. So the water use projection okay, or estimation is always needed, okay, not only for the supply okay, and also the treatment plant design. So like in the introduction uh, uh, on Monday class, uh, we talked about the water and wastewater treatment plant, right? So similarly, you have to uh, predict the water use, okay? Uh, and then to design the treatment plant, okay, based on the uh, water resources. Okay, so the sectors are uh, industry, Okay, I think I will skip this. Okay, industry, natural systems, uh, hydroelectric power generations, recreations. Okay, so it has the oh yes, uh, this decline. Hmm. Okay, you can see this, uh, okay, uh, which I have highlighted here. Uh, from 1970 to 1980, okay, if you refer to the slide uh, 45 uh, just now, uh, okay, the manufacturing accounted for 17% of total US freshwater withdrawals, and then in 1995, it's only about 7% of the total, so it has uh, reduced, okay, of the water use. This decline is mainly due to the recycling and process changes. Okay, so this is something very similar to what I explained just now uh, for the agriculture. Okay, the water use uh, in Malaysia, the agriculture sectors. Okay, the decline is because of the changes. Okay, uh, depends on the government uh, policy. Uh, okay, how they want to uh, save the water usage. Okay reduce the water usage. All right. So hydro depressions. Cities and other communities are used for drinking, cooking, sanitation. Okay, for this kind of like uh, domestic use, uh, okay, the amount is always smaller uh, compared to uh, irrigations. Okay, Resident, residential water use rates are continually fluctuating. Mm -hmm. Okay, provide right, some insight. Um, So water use sectors, uh, okay. The commercial water use. Okay, so this is only for your reference, uh, Okay, how is the commercial water use uh, rate? Okay, the range of the average daily demand, okay, gallon per day, typical daily demand, and what is the hours of peak? Okay, some. Uh, some premise, uh, okay, or the commercial, they, they have their own uh, peak usage. Okay. So it depends on the uh, the human uh, behavior, okay. It will greatly affect the, on the hours of the peak usage. Okay. 
Okay, next is the water use uh, design parameters, uh, some of the water use uh, design parameters. So here are uh, four terms that you can commonly uh, see. Uh, okay, so average uh, day demand. Okay, so it's calculated by dividing the total annual amount of water that produced by 365. Okay. So because this is a uh, by annual, okay, so you can get the uh, um, data of the total annual uh, total amount of water, okay. Then you divide it by three hundred and sixty five. Then you will get the average day demand of the water use, okay. So mean, meaning that, uh, for example, the total amount of the water use in a year. Okay, you get this uh, data and then you divide by 365, then you get uh, this average uh, day demand. Why is amount of water produced? I guess this is the terms that they use uh, in the in the in, in this uh, water water design parameters okay so the produce here probably uh, means that the water that produce okay that supply to the to the users okay so total annual amount of water produced okay is is a is a one one term okay so you divide by 365 Okay, and then for uh, how to calculate the maximum day demand. Uh, okay, so the highest water demand for any 24 hour period. So after you find the average uh, day demand, right? That is the average. Okay, how about the maximum? So in a day, they, of course there will be a maximum. Maximum demand. Okay, because it's fluctuate. Okay, if it, it, it fluctuates. Okay, uh, it has the peak hour uh, demand, right? Like this one, peak hour demand. So, so normally, okay, for the maximum day demand, uh, we have a, uh, we can assume it is 1.223. This is the range uh, for you to uh, estimate the maximum uh, day demand. Okay, so this you, multiply with the average okay so let's say this is the one uh, two three and four so times uh, okay i put a la. okay so to avoid confusion uh, a b c d okay times a la. So we can assume for the maximum day demand, okay, you can assume any numbers from 1.2 to 3, okay, multiply with the average. Okay. Uh, normally we can use uh, 1.65. If you look at the, you refer to the design uh, guideline, okay. And then for the peak hour demand, is the highest water demand for a one hour period. So this is a further breakdown into one hour. So this normally we will use 3 to 3.5 okay, times. Okay. okay, so for example, in the residential area, okay, or the when you when you use the water at home, okay, at home. So usually in the morning hours is the is the peak hour, okay. You use for uh, uh, brushing teeth, okay, uh, bathing, okay, bathing, uh, take shower, okay, uh, flush toilet, uh, cooking, okay. So it's all in the morning. Okay, peak factors are usually multi multiples of the average day demand and are used to describe the maximum day or peak hour demands okay so after you get uh, a number so that is the peak factors okay it's a multiple of the average uh, day demand okay 
like a coefficient uh, okay it's a number Okay, I'll go two more slides, then we'll take a short break. Huh? Okay, before we go for the population, uh, then we'll have some calculation at the part. Okay. Uh, right. So the factors affecting water use. Okay. So population size, uh, distributions, and the compositions. So factors like, for example, the number, age, uh, okay, and so on. Okay, types of water use. Yes, this also will affect because of uh, depends on its uh, under residential, commercial, industrial, or agricultural. Okay, typically there are four uh, main groups. Uh, okay, for the water use, and then economic conditions. Uh, decline the world for the cotton have caused to reduce the cotton plantation in Israel, significantly reducing water demands. Okay, so the world price for uh, some material, okay, it will also affect the uh, water use, especially in the industrial, uh, okay, and also the agricultural, okay, agricultural. Um, okay, for example, we in our country we have the oil palm, we have the rubber tree, right? So if the world price uh, increase or decrease, uh, when it affecting the price, uh, then um, okay. Maybe I will give you another example. Like um, um, okay, like durian uh, Okay, durian. <laughs> okay. Uh, previously, uh, many many farmers they they, they plant the uh, durian right. Then the price. Um, uh, because of the price lah, okay then after some time it, it, the price drops because of the durian uh, supply is high okay then the price is dropped then some some people they stop planting the, the durian tree then another, again the work uh, when when the durian trees uh, uh, durian farms are uh, okay uh, getting lesser then the water usage also getting lesser so this price will affects the uh, the water use okay so this is a, a simple example okay of the of the water use okay so it depends on the uh, price okay climate um, hot and cold weather okay So for a uh, uh, hot weather, okay, of course it will use more uh, water, okay. Like uh, in US, okay, they have a uh, summer, okay. Then you can see from the uh, any movie, uh, okay, that they they used to have the they like to have the uh, pond, uh, uh, at the backyards, okay. So they can have a uh, swim swim at the, in the backyard, okay, a small pool. Okay, that's why the water usage is also high in the US uh, because of this. Okay. Um, and then the environmental conditions. Oh, yes. Uh, talking about this, uh, this part, uh, right? The climate. Okay. So, for example, in your, uh, when you do your um, midterm, midterm test and uh, uh, this final assessment, okay, do not write the answer in, in, in this kind of a, uh, Point form. Uh. So this is also point form, right? Climate for climate and environmental condition. So you have the main point and then you have to elaborate it. Okay. You get what I mean? Uh? For for example, if you uh, want to write the factors of affecting the water use, climate, you don't write hot and cold weather, then you stop there. Okay. You have to elaborate uh, how hot weather affects. Okay, give some example or anything. You can elaborate it. Okay, so this is also a point form, but with some elaboration. Okay, just to remind you lah. Okay, I've seen, I've seen a quite.
quite many students, uh, they, they ask me, can, can they do the point form in the exam? Okay, so you can do that, but if, with a full sentence, okay, with elaboration. Okay, so back to this, uh, environmental conditions, uh, changes in the environmental conditions, uh, water management practices, okay, tourism. Oh, I just uh, noticed that we, our class until 11.30 today, uh, okay. Sorry, uh, I <laughs> forgot to have a break earlier. Okay, I think we cannot, uh, I, I couldn't give you a break. Uh. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Okay, so but I think I will just uh, go it, go through it quickly uh, for this part. Okay, some, uh, okay, two types of the population estimations. Short term, okay. So for the population, okay. Is that okay if uh, there's no break for today? Um, can we continue for the population? If not, then I will continue this uh, next week. How many more we have on population? And then calculations. Quite a lot. I think not much different, right? <laughs> if uh, having a break now, <laughs> almost the end of the class. Okay, okay, sorry, uh, sorry about that. I overlooked uh, the time. <laughs> okay, okay. So I think I will not finish uh, this uh, topic today, lah, okay? For especially the calculation part, I will not rush it, okay? Uh, then for the next week, Monday class, uh, I'll spend a, a bit time for that calculation part. Okay, I'll go a bit more. Right. Okay. Um, Okay, so for the factors, uh, here I have give you some example. I have uh, seven, okay, seven factors, but it could be more than that. Uh, okay, whichever you think that uh, whatever factors that can affect the water use, okay, um, with a logical uh, statement, uh, then it could be acceptable, right? Then populations, uh, okay, population. Okay, like I uh, mentioned earlier, okay, we because the population it itself uh, affects the water use, okay, it's heavily uh, affected the uh, water use, okay. So here we have a, a small uh, subsection to discuss about the population uh, projection, okay. So the factors that affects the population here we have the geographical distribution, the growth rate. Okay, the regional economy, natural resources, and so on. Okay, so the historical data are basic to estimate the future levels of the population. These data are not always available. Okay, so that's why we need to uh, estimate. Okay, so there are two types of the population estimation. So for the short term, uh, which is one to 10 years, okay. And this usually will go for uh, by calculation uh, or we call it a mathematical methods. Okay, for long term estimates, okay, for long term estimate, usually it refers to 10 to 50 years or more. Okay, so that one we need to estimate by graphical methods. But for the graphical methods, it's much uh, complicated. It also involves some calculation and then uh, uh, estimate the trend. Okay, by uh, extrapolations okay, of, of the graph. Okay, uh, there is no exact uh, exact uh, solution because the impact of war energies. Okay, uh, means that there are 
actually a lot of factors la, that affect the populations. Okay, not not only uh, a normal uh, new birth, uh, and then uh, uh, death. Okay, so it, it has a lot of uh, other factors. Okay, forecasts are often based on the past census uh, records of the area. Census is like a, a banji. Uh, okay, in Malay, it's called banji. Uh, like a surveyor. Uh, okay, to check uh, how many. Uh, Family members, okay, in the, in a in a in a in a house. Okay, to optimize the estimations, uh, all possibly, uh, all possible information regarding the anticipated industrial growth, uh, local birth death rates should be obtained. Okay. Well, I think I, I will stop here. Okay, for the population forecasting because this will start uh, to have the calculations, some formulas. Uh, OK, so we will learn about the arithmetical progression and geometric progression. This is for short term estimating. OK, and then we'll have the formula. And then for the long term, we have the graphical prediction. OK, something like that. OK, so this I will. Uh, we will continue uh, on Monday next week. OK. So before I uh, before you all leave, uh, so just now I post the announcement. So for those uh, who didn't aware of the announcement uh, on the web and here, okay, please uh, reply to uh, Dr. Guna's uh, Google form. Okay, uh, fill up the Google form and then uh, tell tell that we are you are in which group, uh, which tutorial group because we couldn't have the replacement uh, for the tutorial on public holiday. So we will just proceed uh, for the tutorial class. Uh, in week three, uh, okay, your tutorial uh, two, okay, for so there will be four groups uh, on Thursday. So please reply uh, to Dr. Guna's uh, Google form, right? Okay, and then the other reminder is the uh, assignment, uh, okay? So assignment. We will separate uh, civil engineering and chemical engineering so for easier uh, grouping. Uh. So from today, you may uh, start looking for group members. Uh, you can form a group with five members. Okay. And then uh, Dr. Lee will uh, post the, uh, the Excel sheet. Uh. We'll post the Excel sheet uh, on Weber so you may uh, uh, check the announcement. Okay. Then once the Google sheet is shared, then you may key in your group members name. OK, there will be two. OK, so I think that's all the two announcement. OK, so I'll see you all uh, on Monday. Oh uh, yeah, one more thing uh, about the midterm test. OK, midterm test uh, previously uh, we agreed to have it on Friday. OK. Friday, eh? and then uh, one of one of you uh, uh, telling me that uh, because previously I put two to four p.m. if I'm not mistaken, uh, two to four uh, Friday uh, in week four. Okay, and then uh, the student uh, told me that they have class or something like. Okay, then uh, so for now, uh, the current the, the latest update uh, uh, for the midterm. So we'll put it. Uh, in week four, Friday, uh, 10 to 12 p.m. Okay, two hours. Okay, midterm. I write it here. Midterm test. Uh, on week four. Okay. Friday is 12. 12. And to twelve. Okay, so I put it here in the chat box uh, for the midterm test data, date and time. 
Okay, so next week, Monday, I will create a Google form so that yeah. I can I can see every one of you aware of the date. Oh, okay, you have tutorial class at that time. Okay, so means that also cannot. Huh? So two to four also cannot. Then Oh, ten thirty to twelve thirty. Hmm. Okay, so if if that really happens, uh, means that uh, all the week, uh, all the weekdays, uh, from eight to five p.m. So you all have uh, some of you have class or clashing of the timetable. Then maybe we can do it uh, after five p.m. That is the last uh, option, uh, so that everyone available. Maybe five. Uh, if you think that five is too you have class until five, then maybe we can do five thirty. Okay, five thirty to seven thirty, something like that. Okay, we will uh, discuss again on Monday. Okay. So this this is not uh, valid anymore for the ten to twelve p.m. because uh, two of you have class. Okay, so I I will try to suit every everyone. Uh, okay, so. Maybe uh five thirty uh, five thirty so we can choose, we can select uh one day okay on the, on the, on the weekdays okay so we will discuss again on Monday all right okay so if no more question uh, you may leave now thank you everyone. Yeah.